Hi, this is Dr. Eric Edu. I'm with the Department of Anatomy and Cell Biology. I present to you a respiratory system and a histology. This will be our objectives. Know the general functions of the respiratory system and the overall organization of the respiratory tree. Identify the histological features of the nasal cavity, vocal cords, and trachea. Know the cellular components of the respiratory epithelium and their functional importance. You should be able to recognize olfactory epithelium and know how it differs from regular respiratory epithelium. You should be able to identify bronchi, bronchial, terminal bronchial, respiratory bronchial, alveolar ducts, and sacs should be able to recognize clara cells and know their functional significance. Should be able to understand the structural organization of alveoli, including the air blood barrier and alveolar pores. Know the cellular components of the alveolar tissue and their individual functions. So as part of introduction, we are looking at the vertical section through the head and neck, revealing the nasal cavity, pharynx, and then larynx. So that is the nasal cavity with the nasal septum. So air will come all the way here to pharynx, then to the larynx. This is the epiglottis, that's the larynx, laryngeal opening. Then that's the esophagus, then the trachea. The laryngeal opening is also known as the laryngeal inlet, okay, and that's the larynx. We are looking at the posterior view, and this is the nasal cavity and how it continues posteriorly. Then you have the funky there, that's the nasal septum. Then you have the nasopharynx, nasopharynx, and then the oropharynx. So the nasopharynx will also be here, and then the oropharynx will be there. And the epiglottis, which covers the laryngeal inlet to allow food to pass over it into the posterior um osophagus so we have the osophagus and then that is the laryngeal inlet which will come into the trachea here so this epiglottis is supposed to cover the laryngeal inlet to allow food to go through the osophagus posteriorly so the major functions of the respiratory system is to allow the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide, allow the warming and humidification of the air which has been filtered, and that is termed air conditioning. It undergoes the same phenomenon as the uh, air conditions we use in our offices and homes. Then. The third major function is the nasal venous sinuses warming the incoming air. So these are some of the nasal venous sinuses, those in red, and the V signifies veins. Then you also have minor functions like uh, smell, perception of smell, with the olfactory uh, nerves, Phonation, that is the sound of the voice. Everybody has a distinct voice. So this is um, operated by these vocal ligaments and then vocal cords. And they also have muscles that stretch or relax to tense the vocal cords to help it vibrate in a certain um, amplitude and a particular pitch. Okay, so 
one person can decide to sing a very high tune or a very low tune okay all these are due to how the muscles are orchestrated to function in terms of relaxation and then contraction so just like a, a the string of a guitar depending on which chord you press the chords of the guitar the strings can either be tense or relaxed and it will give you a particular sound then it also has endocrine functions conversion of angiotensin one into angiotensin two so when we look at this vertical session that is the epiglottis vestibule of the larynx which leads into the laryngeal inlet then at that point you have what we call the ventricular fold and then vocal folds so the vocal folds are the true vocal folds and these are false vocal folds or ventricular folds you can always see that the true vocal folds are related to muscles like the vocalis muscle and the vocal ligament as a thyroid cartilage as a hyoid bone then you have cricoid cartilage intraglottis space the larynx and then trachea so our interest as histologists is how to decipher the components here so that's the ventricular fold one on the left one on the right so that's what we are talking about then vocal fold or the uh, true vocal foods and you always relate that to muscles so you can see the vocalis muscles there another one there mm. then whereas the ventricular foods align with respiratory epithelium that is this portion epithelium there is a type of epithelium called the respiratory epithelium we will describe it as being pseudo stratified columnar with goblet cells Pseudo stratified columnar epithelium in goblet cell. That's the respiratory type of epithelium. So, whereas the ventricular force aligned with the respiratory epithelium, the true vocal cords or vocal folds are rather lined by a stratified squamous epithelium, non keratinized. Stratified squamous, non keratinized epithelium. And this is similar to that of the vagina. So this region will be covered by the stratified squamous epithelium non keratinized whilst that of the ventricular fold will be having a respiratory type of epithelium, which is a pseudo stratified columnar epithelium with goblet cells. So this is a stratification, non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium of the true vocal cords. You can see that. These layers are stratified. You can see one layer, another layer, the second third. Okay, so this is stratified. And you can see also that the topmost cells are squamous or flattened in nature. That's why you have the stratified squamous. And it doesn't have keratin. Then here you can see that these are long columnar cells. So uh, not all the cells at the base reach the surface okay so some of them are sandwiched down the others appear at the top you can actually see this one it begins all the way from here goes and then it's suspended at the mid portion and then this one which is not even starting from the bottom is coming up so it makes it a false stratification okay because it is columnar pseudo stratified columnar epithelium so vestibular fold again pseudo columnar type of epithelium true vocal fold or fold is the stratified squamous epithelium so this is enhanced here and then that one is also enhanced there it's a cast of a human bronchial tree where you have the main bronchus there and you have lobar bronchi and segmented bronchi leading to terminal bronchioles which will also lead to 
respiratory bronchioles, and then you have alveolar duct, and then uh, alveolar sacs, and then the alveolar. So in the nasal region, you have this midline septum. You have these turbinate bones. That's the orbit, another orbit there, and that will be the hard palate. So we transpose that here and have the nasal septum here in the midline. You have the middle concha. Then you also have the inferior concha. Then there's also a superior nasal concha. So these are ethmoidal bulla, which will have some ethmoidal sinuses there in the in the bone. Then in the vertical section, you have the olfactory bulb, olfactory tract, and then olfactory nerves. So that is how the olfactory mucosa will look like this region. So here you have the superior, in middle, and then inferior nasal punky. That the olfactory epithelium with the olfactory nerves, which will sign up with the second order neurons in the olfactory bulb, and the axons of the second order neurons will pass through the olfactory tract into the brain to interpret smell. So, for the olfactory part, we have the olfactory receptor cell, which is a bipolar type of neuron. So, that is a bipolar type of neuron here. It has peripheral processes and then central processes. So these are the peripheral processes, then rights, which ends with cilia. Yeah. So all these are then rights. Then that is the axon, which is going to the olfactory bulb to sign us with a second order neuron. So the olfactory nerve fiber, which is actually the axons of the bipolar neuron. Factory nerve fiber axons or central process of the olfactory receptor cells. They are the first order neurons. And olfactory bulb will contain cell bodies of second order neurons. And some of the second order neurons are the mitral cells, tufted cells, and granular cells. Then the olfactory tracts, which will go that way, will contain the axons or fibers of the second order neurons. As the mitral after the granular. Okay, there's a special gland here known as the Bowman's gland within the olfactory epithelium. And it's um, named after Sir William Bowman. So it has serous secretion. So these are the openings of the Bowman gland, not the surface of the olfactory epithelium. Okay. The yellow portions are the olfactory nerves with the dendrite and axon. So you can see that several axons join to form the olfactory nerve. And these are actually going to go into the olfactory bulb to sign us with a second order neuron there. We have also basal cells within the olfactory mucosa, then sustentacular cells, which are also supporting cells. And these are the cilia, which will pick the chemicals towards the dendrites of the bipolar neurons. Of the olfactory receptor cell. So, in a very simple drawing, this is what you find in the olfactory mucosa. Mucosa is made up of epithelium and lamina propria. So, the epithelium here is made up of the cilia of the bipolar neurons. Thus, this is the uh, dendrite. Oh, these are the dendrites, one in dendron. So, this is a dendron. And a lot of them are dendrites of the bipolar neuron. 
that's the olfactory receptor cell then we close that's the basal cell that is the bowman's gland so this has been positioned like how the nose is positioned with the nostrils facing downwards okay so the nose is facing downwards like that so that's the olfactory nerve fiber which is going towards the optic bulb uh, what do you call it uh, olfactory bulb i beg your pardon to sign us with the second order neuron this is the supporting or sustentacular cell we saw earlier on in the previous slide and these are other or um, chemicals that are coming through the nose we picked by the cilia and transported along the bipolar neurons so this is what we find of factory epithelium there are no goblet cells here that's a factory epithelium as a lamina propria as lymphatic vessel then these are glands bowman's glands and blood vessels these are the cilia of factory epithelium the sustentacular cell or supporting cell basal cell bc so that is what you have here when we go back here so that is the olfactory receptor cell we have one here to olfactory cell there so this is nasa mucosa and then olfactory mucosa the difference is that the nasa mucosa has a respiratory type of epithelium with goblet cells it has ceramucose glands in the lamina propria with dilated venous and uh, olfactory mucosa that one has the epithelium with no goblet cells and only serous glands from the bowman's gland the lamina propria with also dilated venous and veins